Hello everyone, welcome back to the Pause and Read Book Club. We hope you had a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Uh, we're probably going to upload this before the New Year, so we hope you have a, a swell New Year's as well. And today we are going to be talking about Swan Song by Robert McCammon. McCammon. He's got a confusing name, but he's dead, so it's fine. Is uh, he? I don't know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> book. I think in the book it said he's living well in Tampa, Florida, but that was in 2002. So it's been uh, 20 years. Damn. And he wrote this book in the 80s. So. Damn. We don't know. We'll, we'll DM him later. <laughs> oh <my laughs> but God, um, my name is Tyler. I'm one of your hosts. This is Drake. So yeah, a brief little intro on Swan Song for y'all. I wrote it myself. We don't have the book this time. Um, yeah. So, we, just, we read it on the floor of Barnes & Noble's and we put it back on the shelf. Like everyone knows. Swan Song by Robert McCammon is a story about a post-apocalyptic world after a nuclear war between America and Russia. We follow multiple survivors of the blast from different backgrounds who try to find meaning in life after this disaster. Some work towards hope and community, whereas others try to form their own corrupt version of a new world. Yeah, so, you know... The thing that I want to say first, this doesn't take away from the story, but you've seen stuff like this so many times, like a post-apocalyptic world in this day and age, and you know it's been done so many times. And I don't know if you could argue that Robert did it if he was one of the first. I don't. We just generally don't know enough about this genre in that time yeah. period. But I mean, it's definitely. <laughs> It's been 40 years, so he's definitely got a leg up on a lot of people. Yeah, he, he definitely, he definitely had to be one of the first that did this type of story. I know The Stand gets compared to a lot with this, just mm -hmm. different types. You know, The Stand was like a viral disease, and this was nuclear warfare. And also the one, the one I sent you, Reach for the Road, <clears throat> written around the same time, similar type of story. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, is it short though? I thought it was short. Yeah, it's only like three fifty pages. Ah, I can't do it justice. There's no way you could do it. I mean, with the story. I think it's a much more tight story than yeah. this one. But yeah, so anyway, regardless, if it has, I think this has aged so well. It did not feel dated at all, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we'll move into our general thoughts. One thing I do want to say is, um, you know, I, the most important thing to notice is that like this story isn't a huge focus on like the action or like battles that happen after a nuclear war. It doesn't like just break into like, okay, this happened and it's just all out war. Is I think it's like it's just a slice of life. Yeah, it it's is just weird. It's kinda weird and it doesn't really make sense, but I think it it is a slice of life. It's yeah. just it is so like small of a story for the vast majority, like even at its largest points. You never get more than like what we would consider like very small towns, if the, like in a non-apocalyptic sense, worth of people. Like, it, and generally for ninety-nine percent of the story, it's focused around small groups of like two to five people and just like going about their life. It's really just like like you said, a slice of life in an ap apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah, and uh, another thing. Yeah, another big big factor is um it's like very true to life um you know we'll get into that too with the characters themselves but like you'll notice throughout the story characters will come and go mm -hmm. and it's like so natural yeah you know like it's not like yeah they want, have, not forced to be together or they all have like their own paths and desires and like, they want to go somewhere they go their family like you know whatever happened yeah like um <clears throat> They have some characters that are there in the beginning of the book that just, when it's time, like, when there would be a natural time to part, like, oh, we want to do this, well, I still will have my goals. It's like, okay, we're just going to split up then. Yeah. Good luck to you. I hope you find your way. Yeah, but uh, we definitely, uh, so we follow a few main characters. I don't know quite how many. It, they bounce through well, I think couple. you could narrow down to three. So, it, this, it's no spoiler with, I mean, it's... We're just going to name the characters. Yeah, it's, so it's like sister... Oh, uh, well, let's start with, like, yeah, it's, like... Sister? Sister. Who starts off... We'll just say where they start off. Yeah. Sister who starts off in New York. Yeah, and then... Um, um, Roland Croninger, is that how you say it? Yeah. Who starts off in Idaho. And then Swan, who is... I would say is the main... Like, of the main characters, she's yeah. the main one. It's hard to say... 
It's in Kansas, he starts off? Yeah, and hard to say the main character, because there are multiple... It, you never felt like a second, like... You never felt for a second like that it wasn't... That it was focused just on one person. Yeah. There's, like, an overarching, of course, but everyone felt so fleshed out. And after that, Josh... Josh was with Swan. Yeah. I don't know if you want to go into all the side characters. Yeah, we're not going to go... Those, those are the main ones. Basically, it just starts with a bunch of different characters, and you're following mm -hmm. that general There's actually, path. As a teaser, I'm not going to spoil <laughs> it, but there's a fourth storyline. Who? I can't tell you if you don't know it. You read the book, right? What? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's not... There is, like... If you've read The Stand... I haven't, but I've read some. I mean, I've seen so many comparisons. They follow that same thing where there, there is, it's not a spoiler, I mean, there is an overarching evil. That's kind of the premise mm -hmm. of it. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, story itself, the concept. We already kind of touched overall, on it. Yeah, let's do like the overall concept of the story. We already talked about it a little bit, but yeah. how do you feel about post apocalyptic stories to begin with? It's weird, because like normally I would say there needs to be some sort of theme or enemy I don't know how you describe it. like like zombies a uh, zombie post-apocalyptic where this one's a nuclear post-apocalyptic but the nuclear bombs are only a threat initially once they explode you I mean you have the lingering radiation and the effects of the climate but they're not like an ongoing enemy and they're not worried about more nukes dropping you know so it's really just the world itself becomes the main antagonist how do we survive when there's no crops there's no food the people are all dying and ravaged and as willing to attack you as they are to help you um i thought it was gonna be a lot more generic than i found it to be i thought i would get a little bored with a, a nuclear wasteland because there's just not that much to do but i think focusing on the characters was definitely the correct way to go and it really brings a lot of life into the story because you're no longer you know, depending on the world and the world building, now you have characters that are like genuinely amazingly written characters that you're focused on, and it kind of allows you to just use the background how it's supposed to be. It's just, yes, they live in a nuclear wasteland. We only need to focus on that every two seconds. Let's focus on their their interactions and their relationships and how they develop throughout the story. Yeah, and I think that's yeah, that goes right back into the slice of life. It's not like the war is continuing. It has nothing to do after the fact with the nuclear yeah. war. And we don't even, we don't ever find out why the, yeah, we just know. Know, I mean, we know in the seventies, the red scare, the uh, cold war, <laughs> and in this scenario, the cold war becomes a real war and yeah. bombs are dropped, but we don't know like, you kind of thrown who, into it. it. Even in the story they say, we don't know who fired first. We just, we just know once one side found out the other was dropping nukes, both sides decided, well, we're just gonna unload our all our arsenals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, I think it was done in a really nice way, a really interesting way. But I also found, like, you know, the thing I note the most, um, this is about the book in general, but I felt like it didn't feel like 900 pages, even though it was only a slice of life. Like, there wasn't, like, like I said multiple times, there wasn't, like, battles or, like, something happening every single time, but I was okay with it. I could yeah. fly through it without really caring. It's just all about the story. And, uh, but yeah, of course, the main driving is a very character-driven. So the characters themselves, I don't... I don't think it was about character depth, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were supposed to develop in that way. Like, you know, we always talk about, um, you know, oh, the characters didn't, like, progress and they, they developed. I don't think it was really about that because no one really changed. Like, I completely disagree. Really? I don't I think, think they like grew. I think every single character in the story had an arc. Not always a good arc. Like they didn't always change for the better. But no one is the same as they were at the beginning of the story as they are at the end. Either they were <coughs> evil at the beginning or whatever and they changed to more of a good side or they were ignorant and now they know the world they live in i think i feel like everyone had a change except for like you know obviously side character is not gonna have as much mm -hmm. growth and then one specific character does not change at all but that's the point of them yeah i feel like it wasn't a gradual change that's i think that's what i more mean because like obviously in the beginning they were a certain type of way and then it switched mm -hmm. and then it kind of kept on that path i don't think anyone really deviated um but yeah either way 
besides the main one, of course, I think, you know, I, the characters themselves, like, I said, I mean, Sister, Sister was a big one, where it's just like, a, like, after it happened, it's just like, you know, I don't want to go too in-depth, but yeah, that was a big shift. It, it really, like, people, it seems like they're just kind of, like, going through the motions and not really being an individual, and then once this tragedy happens, they kind of, like, snap back to themselves and it's like who they are at their core and like who they were before the bombs drop basically doesn't even exist anymore and it's just like their <laughs> raw potential and spirit is what shines through afterwards because like yeah. you don't have time for like niceties or to be complacent if you do that you're just gonna die yeah. it's like we just have to be honest and upfront and be as real as we can and that's just what we're gonna be moving forward i think uh actually a big thing I did of course like the characters but I think the more important thing is the interaction this is a huge like interaction relationship book like, of course it was important each one each individual character in their struggle but how they interacted with the world and the other characters it was yeah. just so in depth I felt like and it gave it so much life and like I mean and you know of course there's a lot of loss too um, you know I don't know if I was really surprised by most loss it kind of made, I was expecting a lot more people to die. Yeah, but I, really don't, but I do feel like no one lingered too long. Like, yeah. no one had a lot of plot armor. I mean, obviously your main characters are going to make it deeper into the story than everyone else. But I don't feel like any character in particular <laughs> was like, ah, he's just around for plot or whatever. You know, it feels like if, if there's a real chance for someone to die or become main, that, that's probably going to happen in this story. Yeah. So yeah, overall characters were great. Um, writing in general, great writer. Can't really say anything. I mean, yeah, definitely like. I don't think the pros are crazy. You know, it was very simple writing. Like not to say not in a bad way. I'm just saying it's yeah. not like there's no there's no poetry. There's no yeah. He didn't go in depth. He no crazy whimsical detail. But. I think it was really interesting the way he gave the atmosphere so much life. Where he was like, oh, it turned red. It turned purple. There were Red oh, yeah. tornadoes. That was really interesting. He didn't have to. I mean, he talked about the sky a lot. Yeah, it has the sky like is effect. like basically a main character. Yeah, I like it. he really gave it, it. It really like I didn't even think about using that because they have these low radiation clouds that kind of cover all the landscape. And he talks about how you can tell how far people away by where the light bounces <laughs> off of the clouds. Yeah, and stuff like that. And that was a really nice detail. And then yeah, the environment really comes to life. You really feel like you're in a desolate hellscape where just yeah everything is dead and brown and rotten and a big thing too is how much he gives like once again the atmosphere um there's one scene um where you could assume um this travesty happened uh nuclear radiation and everything and it doesn't just affect people the mm -hmm. animals are oh, for yeah. some reason coming down they have no other you know game to hunt so they start hunting humans and they become more ravenous and they undergo all those other changes and it just gave like a new look about yeah, it. like it, it doesn't you, just affect it humans it gives you something like an active threat in the environment besides just like starving to death or yeah, dying from exposure it's like you actually have to worry about these animals yeah. hunting you down and they want to survive you know they want to survive too like it infected everything it's yeah. not just the humans the animals are starving too um, I think that was a, a great way but yeah overall simple not in a bad way in a good way it wasn't overly complicated. It didn't need to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I it definitely like. If you want to move into pacing. Yeah. I think this is one of the best pace books we've read, if not the best. I, at no point, was I like, oh, I gotta get through this chapter, or like, I do not care what these characters are up to right now. I just want to get back to Swan. I just want to get back to, to, uh, Ronan. It's like, Roland. 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 Uh, I was like, I was invested in every single plot line, and it never felt like it was dragging. I mean, maybe every now and then there was a chapter where I didn't really care. Like, I texted you when they started going over, like, tarot cards and stuff. I didn't really oh, yeah. care. But, That's so small, though. But it, it was literally one chapter, and it's done, and it, it switches between POVs so Seamless smoothly. Thing, like, the, all the stopping points are really good, because it'll like, get to something exciting. And it doesn't ever cut it off where it feels like it's just teasing you. It's like it gets through what it needs to go through. It kind of leads up to something else about to happen. 
then it switches POVs and you are instantly brought back into what those characters are doing and you never feel lost. It's like, oh, yeah, right, they're here yeah. and we're going now. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree that the pace is near perfect. There are a, a couple parts, of course, where I really wanted to, like, you know, um, reminds me of Priory a little bit where mm -hmm. I really, I really loved Roland and, uh, and Colonel Macklin's uh, yeah. story. And they weren't given a lot of uh, time towards the middle, if you noticed. Yeah, like, we yeah. spent a long time away, and I was like, I really wanted to see. Um, so, But that's just a personal thing. Also, I loved how, with the pacing, I was kind of getting annoyed where, like, I wanted, of course, the characters to meet up. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't make it too long. Like, he didn't keep adding barriers, like, yeah. oh, and then they did this, yeah, and they once, couldn't find it. They, once you know the characters, are, yeah. there's a certain point in the book where you know okay they're all heading towards the same spot and it's like and there's you know there's a little bit of um <laughs> turmoil trying to get there because you're not getting to the wasteland but it's yeah. never like it's never like oh they saw someone in the distance and they had the pursuit and then it's like yeah. oh the wolves came out it's like no it's like i'm glad he let it happen and it happened so seamlessly where i feel like these characters were meant to meet each other they're they just interact perfectly like even though all these characters are so different, by the time they meet, they feel like they belong together and they feel like they really work as a larger group. Like when the two two of the three main groups finally meet up, it's like, oh, yeah, this would work. This yeah. is a, like a survivor group that would I could see happening. Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, overall, I have nothing to say about anything to do with the, the story. Uh, the characters, the pacing, the prose. Um, but yeah, I mean. You want to go over plot? Not like specific details, but like. You mean like the vague driving force of it? No, do you feel like it was a satisfying book? Like, do you like where. Do you like where yeah, I, I do. Uh, my only gripe about the whole book, in terms of like the plot, is I feel like it got a little. Not anticlimactic towards the end but I felt like it just like kind of got really got a little muddy yeah I don't know I didn't of course it was still great I just felt like it kind of just leveled out to like a big man you know it yeah. made sense but I was like yeah I, I, don't I would know. agree with you there at the end like the last hundred pages I felt <laughs> yeah that's exactly what I want to say rushed because it's almost a thousand page book but yeah. it's like thrown together I don't feel like these characters would do this right now like I don't yeah. think the bad guys and the good guys would be this close without conflict happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of spun into a, a little weird thing, but I didn't care because it was such a great journey. Yeah. The journey is an important thing here. I don't think the ending mattered. Um, it was a, it made sense for the ending. The um, only thing, the only problem I had just as like <laughs> overarching problem was I just don't think the this is how people would behave. <laughs> really? I don't think, like, uh, as far as, like, Swan's group and uh, Sister's group, I think that's probably normal. They talk about how they have, like, a, a red cross set up to help people that they find at one point in the story. And um, Swan and them find a lot of loners just trying to get by on their own. Mm -hmm. I really don't think you'd be able to militarize uh, survivors in an apop apocalyptic, like, maybe on a small scale. But I think generally, people would be more inclined to stick together and build communities rather than, like, attacking each other would happen, of course, when it gets down to, like, dwindling resources. But I think people are just, there aren't that many evil people, you know? You think? I think even if you have a person that's trying to persuade everyone into becoming this threatening force, I think people would just see how much like more pleasant of a life they could have if they could just work together and survive together instead of always being at each other's throats i really think they would just get tired of fighting i don't think they would keep doing it they would be like we're we're all dying and starving i don't want to fight every day yeah <laughs> i just want to sleep <laughs> I, I do understand that point but i think they kind of argued against it with Y y as y'all will see, you know, um, they go through a lot of trauma in the beginning that paves way for the chaotic nature of everything. I think that's a great, like, factor. 
Yeah. You know, like when someone's truly broken mm -hmm. and they have to go through that and then it just kind of snowballs. But I can understand that too. I do, no, I do think he sells it in a convincing way. I don't think it's like glaringly yeah. a, pro a problem. I just, in my heart, I was like, I don't think this would happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Mm -hmm. But I also think like, you know, the weird thing is like the fantasy aspect too, which I, I didn't expect actually. I was expecting more fantasy from the way you described it. Of like humans evolving to yes, change. I was like, same. I was like, where are they gonna like grow wings? Or I something? know. I thought the exact. I was so confused what was gonna happen, uh, but we're not gonna spoil it for y'all. Yeah. But what he did was brilliant. Yeah. It's such a fun and interesting way. I did not expect it at all. I know they were teasing it in the beginning, mm -hmm. foreshadowing. But I was like, but what are they talking about? But like, I could. I don't think anyone could have predicted. Yeah. This kind of yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's do our little fun one, uh, overall enjoyment and bingeability. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's what we were forgetting. Yeah. yeah. Ten. <laughs> I think it was extremely bingeable. Yeah. Very I, enjoyable. I love this story. Even in a story where... That's been done? You yeah. got... You got dogs dying. You got babies being beaten to death. I was oh. like, I am so happy to be reading this right now. I was, oh. I was thrilled. I was... I was a fan of everything going on. I think, you know, it's a brutal, unyielding wasteland where, like, real shit is going down and people are going to die in horrible and gruesome ways and nothing's going to be fair. Good characters are going to die. Um, evil characters are going to prevail sometimes. And I, like loved how real the story felt i think yeah i think enjoyment is also a 10 for me it was yeah as close to perfection as you can get for a story being so well paced and characters being so well written they just come together and mesh perfectly and it just works yeah it's truly readable i mean it's just so easily uh to digest and i will say again you know I don't know if most people, I, I've heard so many things about this book saying it's disgusting and it, it, it's hard to read sometimes. I don't think it's that bad. There was a few parts that I was like, maybe we're just gross humans. And we all, uh, you know, maybe I'm used to it I mean, with what I already have watched, but it wasn't truly like, oh my God, that was terrible. There was one scene, we're not gonna say it because it is pretty gripping, as you just kind of mentioned, um, right when you get into the, a new community. Yeah. That was the first one I was like, oh shit. Yeah, but <laughs> I did not they don't that. shy away from much. Like, yeah, yeah. It, there's only one pullback when there's a great scene I will, and it's like, okay, we didn't go that far. You stopped it. I <laughs> will like, say it flips all of a sudden, and it's so true to the change of pace in the story and the change of uh, POV. Like, it all changes at once from like being like kind of gross to all of a sudden, mm -hmm. like, oh, God, they're really yeah. down in the dumps. Um, but yeah, I think we did a good job. We yeah, go well, our, we gotta do our rating. Yeah, we gotta go to our our ratings. Before we rate this, I want to state the scale. Okay. Again, I know we do it like at the, the same rating? time, but the rating scale five. Because I was talking to my brother about this. Let me say mine and see if you agree. Okay. I keep thinking about it, and I feel like Link off Good Mythical Morning. I don't know if you watch. <laughs> yeah, of course I watch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like everyone watches, but like I feel like I struggle. So five. Editing Tyler here. These nerds talked about their ranking scale for over 10 minutes. So let me break it down for you. A 5 is alright. A 1 is trash. A 10 is very good. I don't know why it took them so long to figure this out, but that's the scale. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled program. But yeah, we generally agree on the scale. I think uh, we're diff a bit different. I think you're a bit harsher with your ratings, which is fine. But I'm starting to learn more, as y'all see later. Oh, yeah. To kind of reassess everything. Um, yeah. So that's our kind of the rating system again. So it's moving into... Well, an explanation of a 1 through 10 scale. But, huh. you know. Moving into my ranking for Swan Song. Rating. My rating... Moving <laughs> into my rating for Swan Song. I give Swan Song an 8.9. Oh, wow. 
Um, 8.9, that's high. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the highest you've given. Yes, and it's also a huge gap now as we're moving to our re -ra re uh, ratings. <laughs> but I think, <clears throat> not to spoil my rating, but I think it's a, a well-deserved gap. Well, let me, okay, so, a little spiel. <clears throat> I think it was amazing. Uh, I literally, and you know, the first, like, maybe, like, hundreds, 100 pages, like, 200 pages, like, okay, it was good. But then I tore through it like 400 pages and it was just so enjoyable and I honestly have no reason to give it any less. The only reason I don't give it higher is once again, like we said before, I don't think the post-apocalyptic style of story is personally something I love, mm -hmm. but I, it was done so well, I couldn't, I mean, couldn't give it any less, yeah. but it's not quite a nine where it just like blew my mind. It was just such a great story. And of course the ending kind of, no, it didn't let me down. But it just, if it would have tied it in in an insane way, I don't know how. I can't even give any yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, opinions on it. But Stick tuned to the spoiler section if you want to us yeah. talk about the ending. But yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I, I was thinking about it 8.5 to 9 the whole time. And I kind of decided on on that. Okay. <laughs> so throw back to our Christmas video. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Drake. <laughs> I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I, okay, to start off, when we, when we talk about reading this book, I was like, oh, Drake wants to read this fucking post-apocalyptic superhero book. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll read it. I don't really care. <laughs> and then I started reading it. I was like, oh, wait, no, it's a really good book. And it just kept getting better and better and better and better. It never, like, um, like we had this issue with Priory. It's a long book. But it doesn't deserve to be long. Yeah. It can be written in 500 pages. It didn't need all that fluff. This had no fluff. It Every element in the story was important. And it all built up to a final climactic ending. Where the ending, we, we said, is a little muddled. And that's why it's not a 10 out of 10. But, I mean, it's not a bad ending. I wasn't, like, mad at the end of the book. I was okay. It was yeah. okay with it. And it was great. It's just all about the journey. The journey yeah. was done so well. It's not the destination. Yeah. It's the journey. And the, yeah. This had to be the best, it's up there with The Hobbit for like best journeys in a story. Like just a, a gang of people trying to get somewhere. It was done so well. The only thing different is that there is no final destination. There's no, they have nowhere in mind. They're just trying to live and they're like, we go to this community. Ah, oh, it sucks here. They're out of food. We got to move. And it's like, okay, we're now back on the road. Yeah. But yeah, a nine out of 10, it is damn near perfect if you're like a big apocalyptic or survival reader you might this might be your new favorite book yeah and it's a lot of people's favorite but i think that you made a good note which i forgot to mention is like um the only thing i was confused about is where it would go yeah because like right up to the end you don't know what yeah, is gonna at, at end. one point it takes them like six weeks to get out of a certain state and they're like we're going to mexico and it's like <laughs> This book's gonna take forty years. Yeah, yeah. but the, uh, it ends up changing course. But yeah, until you know, it's not until like the last third of the book where you know where you're introduced to. It's like we need to go here. Yeah, and what might happen. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's our that's our that's our ratings. All right, so that was the ending of our spoiler-free section of Swan Song by Robert McCammon. Just so shit. Just so click. Here or here, whatever side it is, it goes to the spoiler section. Yeah, click <laughs> click all over for the next part um, where we go really in depth with everything we thought of it. We're gonna try not to do it retelling. It shouldn't be bad. Um, <laughs> Talk about our main big points. Yeah. But yeah. Um, that's next month. It. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Next month we are reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Another. That's a huge one. <laughs> yeah. That one's... Everyone should have read it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. We both have not. Read it. No, we both seen the movie. Yeah, but multiple I think, times. I think I will rewatch it. No, okay. not before. No, after I read the book. We might rewatch. We're gonna watch it and record. Don't our promise reaction. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. <laughs> we might. At the very least, I will rewatch the movie after reading the book just to see how they compare. I'm it's reading and movie. watching it at the same time. Oh wait, I have it right here. Oh shit. This is heavy. Um, I have all five books. Loser. <laughs> I have the nice. Uh, you have the 
or, graphic novel version. Yeah, it has like art in it. Super cool. Yeah. Um, I probably will read at least the first two or three. Not we're not gonna go into a review of that. Yeah. I'll just in case you guys are interested, I'll give a brief mention of them and like do they hold up to the first yeah. one. Yeah, and if you care enough, you could do Yeah, if anyone wants reviews. if literally one person <laughs> um, I will do Please I'll do a three hour review. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of Take off awesome. all week and I'll <laughs> analyze everything. Um, but yeah, so uh, check all that out and uh, hopefully you'll be along with us next month for that. Um, yeah. uh, be sure to like and no, fucking do that. Don't even like and subscribe. Watch <laughs> the video and go on your way. But if you don't mind, check out the TikTok. Yeah. Try to push that. Yeah. So yeah, other than that, pause and.